Daniel Brandon Bilzerian Esquire, otherwise known as Dan Bilzerian, Instagram icon, playboy, son of a wealthy jailed business tycoon, apparent poker genius, Navy SEAL, marijuana salesman. I know what you're thinking. Adam, this is a finance channel. Why talk about Dan Bilzerian? We learned three important lessons from looking at his life. Coming up today on Finance in Five. Disclaimer, everything I talk about in this video is based on information which is in the public domain. However, these are only allegations at this stage, so keep that in mind. Even though I know and care nothing for Instagram influencers, and in many cases, if I had to choose between spending an afternoon within a 10 mile radius of one of them, or bathing in my own vomit collected over many decades, it would be option two. What does get my attention is when the lifestyles that they promote are revealed either to be a total sham or paid for by someone else, or both. You see, friends, an interesting revelation came to light recently concerning a lawsuit between a former employee of Ignite, Ignite is Bilzerian's lifestyle brand, complete with satanic goat horn logo, and Dan Bilzerian himself. The former employee, Curtis Heffernan, is mad, mad at Bill's bills. Dan Bilzerian has been spending money like it's going out of fashion. You know, just spending more money, uh personally i mean i i think i spent 30 million bucks last year so uh, you know i've been turning up a lot more since we've spoken and is that <laughs> uh, that ever give you pause uh no man i'm like you know it's uh you know i'm launching a business and creating a brand and, and doing things the employee was being asked to declare to auditors that the things that bill's Arian was buying bed frames rock climbing wall star wars guns travel trampolines an expensive vault leftover liquor from a valentine's party were all business expenses One month jordy huh four hundred and thirty thousand dollars in one Month. Good morning. The business expenses. Relax. Business expenses. <laughs> yes. Jordy, look what you got here. What? Look at this. Twenty-six thousand dollars for one f dinner. Okay. No. 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 This could be explained. Dad, we had client. We had fi the Pfizer Five clients. Minutes. Right. The Porter House from mm -hmm. Argentina. The expensive champagne and the wine. We had to buy champagne. And Heffernan refused to write off the extravagant purchases as business expenses, citing concerns of financial fraud. Here we see Ignite posted a loss in 2019 of $69 million and only generated $9.7 million in revenue. The shares weren't performing particularly well before this revelation came to light, having dropped in value in the last 12 months. It seems Ignite is aptly named, as Ignite is what happens to all dollar bills of shareholders. Heffernan was promptly fired, which led to him filing a retaliatory lawsuit against Bilzerian. And this is where all of the above details about the true nature of the success or lack thereof of Ignite was revealed. And it seems that Dan himself is unhappy about this coverage. Just today, he posted this tweet where he talks about some journalist. In my humble opinion, when you read this tweet, it would be impossible for Dan to be mad at the opinion of the journalist unless there was at least a grain of truth to the allegations. I'm thinking I'm done. Dan doesn't mention the fact that Ignite posted a loss last year. Personally, I think marijuana is awful. Nobody reports on the damaging psychoactive effects of skunk in the media, but I'll still support other people's rights to buy it, even if it does ruin their lives. This video isn't about the marijuana debate. And yet, other companies based in Canada where selling weed is legal are doing quite well, making billions in profits. It's hard to know whether that's because they're more established or because they market themselves by promoting the benefits of medicinal marijuana as opposed to promoting lifestyle benefits. Because ultimately, the problem with a lifestyle brand like Ignite is that however aspirational it may seem to own a large luxury property like Dan Bilzerian claims to, although we'll get to that, and to drive fast cars and to shoot guns and to use Ignite products, it also alienates a lot of people within the age range that he's appealing to who just look at his life and think to themselves, I could never really have that sort of lavish lifestyle and I don't see how being stoned all the time brings me any closer to achieving it. I'm not clear who Ignite's target consumer is. You just can't get stoned and drink all day and expect to accumulate vast sums of wealth and maybe the idea or deception that says otherwise lies at the heart of the challenges that this company faces. According to this article, Ignite is making a loss. 
Bilzerian even claimed that the need for hand sanitizer had had a negative impact on the brand's ability to manufacture vodka. Our uh, vodka, which is super f- good, um, the manufacturing has been interrupted a little bit because they're using ethanol now for hand sanitizer because it's more profitable than it is to make vodka. So we're actually coming out with some hand sanitizer and some face masks. Um, the goal isn't really going to be to make money, but to kind of just get that out there to people that don't have access. And so really, so, um, so what are you guys doing on that front? Um, we're currently in the process of, um, of making it. But the fact that earnings are not that high has not stopped Bilzerian from using shareholders' cash to fund wild parties, travel, luxury living, and even the renting of his house. Yes, that's right. Bilzerian's Bel Air mansion, which he vacated recently, was not bought, but in fact rented for the massive sum of $200,000 per month. 10979 Chalon Road in Bel Air is actually owned by Dan Bolin, who forced Bilzerian out recently in order to put the property up for sale. But Bilzerian claimed $1.2 million as a PPP loan to help out Ignite during the crisis, with 10979 Chalon Road being the company's principal business address. You only get the money if you have a business address. Bilzerian has applied for loan forgiveness on that $1.2 million and was delaying rent payments for at least two months before he finally left. On a 6th of June budget call, Heffernan warned Dan Bilzerian and his father Paul that renting Chalon Road was a massive waste of money during lockdown, with social distancing requirements rendering gatherings difficult or impossible. He noted that Ignite's cash was low and that the company was struggling to break even, but Dan doubled down and claimed that he would be utilizing the house for summer pool parties. The next day, on June the 7th, Dan accused Heffernan of taking drugs and acting strange. Yes, that's right. Cannabis advocate Dan accuses an employee of taking drugs. And on 8th of June, his employment was terminated. And that's when Heffernan sued Bilzerian, as we see, for three things. Whistleblower retaliation, defamation, and wrongful termination. I've posted the link to the allegations in the description so that you can read all about them. The inescapable reality appears to be that Ignite is only making $9.7 million in revenue, but it's forking out over $60 million in expenses. Despite living in Vegas throughout the lockdown, so at least since March, Bilzerian has continued to rent out 10979 Chalon Road, so that's $800,000 plus that he spent on an empty building. So these summer pool parties would have to be pretty decent to justify spending close to a million dollars in rental of an empty property just to be able to host them. If I approached Dan Bilzerian with a business idea that brought in $9.7 million a year but spent over $60 million, he'd tell me, that's not a business you've been smoking something. But actually, he's the one who's been smoking something. And there's perhaps a sad irony to the fact that the more of his lifestyle branded marijuana he smokes, the more deluded he becomes that Ignite is making money, which increases the chance of him losing more money by overspending, splashing more trust fund cash in his drug-induced state of paranoia in order to prove skeptics and panicking investors wrong. If the rumors are true and he really is an expert at odds, gambling and poker, then he jumps ship before this Titanic hits the iceberg. It's like we were all taught, you get what you deserve. How long have I been smoking since I was 11 years old? Perfect. Before you motherfuckers were born. Does <laughs> <laughs> dance smoking and lifting go together? It goes real fucking good. And the moment you start to use your company as a delivery vehicle for the expropriation of other people's resources, the end is never far away. If Bilzerian does own most of the shares in Ignite, that doesn't seem to me to be anything to brag about. Effectively, he's saying here that he might not own a mansion, but he does own a loss-making company. I'm sure that if you're watching this video, then like me, you are unlikely to care what an Instagram self-promoter does or says, especially one who boasts openly about taking drugs, drinking, copulating countless times, and suffering two heart attacks on successive days after overdosing on Viagra. Instagram shows a sanitized view of the lives of people like this and encourages us to believe that you can be self-serving and even self-destructive, but also wealthy and famous without there ever being any downsides or any problems in your life. There will always be a natural interest in the lives of those who seem on the surface to be happy and successful. But in Bilzerian's case, we're beginning to see the truth, which is that, as Prince said, all that glitters ain't gold. My advice, don't envy these people. So I take the other half. So now I'm like 200 milligrams into this 
Viagra, which is like, you know, double the absolute max from what, I, you know. You can have to, those, some guys have to get their drained, right? Yeah, yeah, well, we'll get to that. Life is hard, and many of us, sadly, will pass through it without fanfare and without having a great deal to show for our efforts. But if you have clothes on your back and any change in your pocket, you're better off than over 95% of the world's population who live in poverty. The problem with comparing yourself with someone else is that number one, you don't know anything about them apart from second-hand information about this one particular aspect that you choose to compare yourself against them in. Second, you don't know what they had to go through to get where they are and what other problems they are facing. You don't know what resources you have that they don't. Could be ideas, connections, relationships, opportunities. And you also belittle your own amazing life because any time spent looking at what you perceive to be someone else's success, it's time that you don't spend observing how amazing it is that you were born where you were as opposed to in abject poverty, and that whatever you've gone through, you're still alive to tell the tale. And you're much better off with one or two people in your family who you care about and who care about you than you are orientating your life around trying to get people to fall over themselves to follow a fake lifestyle that you promote. But I hope this video helps you to glimpse the true hardships of maintaining a showy way of living and the strangulating effect of living for the approval of fickle followers. It must be exhausting having to be the person who is perceived as a rich playboy gambling success, and there's a real risk that your future is imprisoned by the expectations of other people if you're that person. The problems seem to be mounting up for Bilzerian, and perhaps this was always going to happen. So there we have it. Stay in school. Don't do drugs. Don't cavort with prostitutes. Don't fire people wrongfully. Don't overdose on Viagra. That's it for today. Please consider subscribing. All the very best.